Welcome to online instruction for using Microsoft Teams. Today, we're going to talk specifically about using the Teams platform on your personal computer. At this point, you've probably already logged in to your student's account. When you do that, you're going to see the Microsoft Suite. Take a look at the Teams icon. This is where you'll go to access Teams. Although we highly recommend downloading the Teams app on your personal computer instead of using it from the web-based program. You can see here that I've downloaded the Teams app. Let's click on Teams. Once you click on the Teams app, all of the classes that your child is enrolled in should appear. Right now you can see that I'm enrolled in a fourth grade class. There's fourth grade Bible, science, history, reading, spelling and vocabulary, English composition, fourth grade math, and a homeroom with my teacher, Mrs. Williams. Keep in mind that the homeroom will be where your teacher goes live at scheduled times throughout the day. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. A student should have as many teams as he has core classes or subjects at school. Let's take a look at some of the specifics under each one of our class tiles. Let's take a look at fourth grade history. Once I click on fourth grade history, notice to the left there is a white box. Make sure you click on general. Now let's take a look at the tabs across the top. Within each subject tile for the elementary, we're going to be using only two of the tabs at the top. The first one is the post tab. This is where general conversation about history class can take place. Maybe a teacher will make an announcement. You can respond with a question or a comment. The next tab to the right is the files tab. The Files tab is a place where your teacher can load important documents underneath the Class Materials folder. Let's click on Class Materials. Here I can see that the fourth grade teachers have already uploaded a couple of important documents for history. There's California Topics, California History Teaching Project, and a PowerPoint document entitled The First Californians. My fourth grade teachers know that these documents will be important for me to reference throughout the course of taking my history class this semester. So keep in mind, the tabs across the top that we will use for each subject will be the Posts tab and the Files tab. Really, the class notebook, assignments, and grades won't be relevant to our individual subjects in the elementary. Now, let's head back over to the General tab. If you'll notice, just below the General tab to the left, it says One Hidden Channel. I think we might want to unhide that. Click on One Hidden Channel. Click on Show. This is called a channel. A channel is a way for a teacher to organize a subject. So in the elementary, all of our channels should be labeled weeks. This will be the first week of online instruction, week 28, March 31st to April 3rd. Let's click on that. Now you can see that every channel or week in the elementary will have a post section and a file section as well. It's very important to note that the post section underneath the individual weeks will be where our daily lessons are recorded and posted for your child to watch. At the end of a five-day week, there should be five posted history videos for my child to watch. Each channel also has a files tab where, again, a teacher could upload important documents for me to view. So let's just go back and review. Each subject tile in the elementary will be used primarily for two things. One, under the general tab, under post at the top, we can have conversations about history. We can ask questions, view announcements, and even reply. The files tab will be where the teacher uploads important documents for me to view. Under the channels, which will be divided into weeks in the elementary, will be where my child watches his daily lessons recorded and posted by the history teacher. Now, let's head back to all teams and talk about our homeroom. You can see that I'm currently enrolled in Mrs. Williams' fourth grade homeroom class. Let's click on that. Under the general tab on the left, under posts at the top, you can see that this is where conversations pertaining to my homeroom can take place. These will be messages specifically from Mrs. Williams to her specific class. Now, the homeroom class tile will be very important. If you will notice, Mrs. Williams has already posted the daily schedule for me to view. I can see that school starts at 8.30 each day. She's going to go live at that time, right here in her home room. She'll begin with a welcome and questions and answers, maybe from the day before. 
the daily schedule will be a guide for parents to follow. I can then at 8.50 watch my recorded Bible lessons. At 9.10, transition over to math. At 10 o'clock, Mrs. Williams is going to go live for math questions and answers right here in my homeroom. Although we realize it won't always be possible, we want to encourage each family as much as possible to follow the schedule we provide. That way, the live question and answer times will be most beneficial to your child after he's watched his daily lessons. Now, there are two more tabs across the top that we will be using for the home room class tiles. Make sure you're still under general on the left hand side and let's click on assignments. All assignments for each elementary subject will be turned in underneath the assignments tab for the home room. That way, Mrs. Williams' assignments stay connected to her grade book. Let me show you how to view and turn in an assignment. Now, I'm not going to practice in Mrs. Williams' homeroom tile, so let me go back to my admin demonstration tile. You won't have this one, but this is just where we're going to practice for now. Let's click on Assignments at the top. Here you can see that I have been given an assignment. Grammar, page 122, exercise B. It was a homework assignment that's due, well, actually today. Let's click on that. Here I can read the details of the assignment. Complete grammar page 122, exercise B, and then upload a picture. So simply click on Add Work. Here I have a couple of options. If I were turning in an assignment that could actually be created in a Word document, I could click on New File. I could then click on Word Document to create my homework assignment. But this specific assignment is given to me to upload a picture. So let's go back, click on Add Work, at the bottom on the left, I need to click on Upload from this device. From here, I can upload documents that have been saved to my desktop or even to my documents files. This can be a Word document or maybe a picture that I've taken of a worksheet, or in this case, a picture from my grammar book. Choose the file that you are wanting to upload and click Open. Then, click Done. And don't forget to turn it in by clicking on the Turn It In button in the top right-hand corner. It's just that easy. Now, remember, if you're uploading a picture of a workbook or a worksheet, or maybe some math problems that you've done on notebook paper, it's really easy to do on your mobile device. Well, now that we've turned our homework in, let's head back over to the general post section of our homeroom. Now, keep in mind that this is where my teacher is going to go live a couple times during the day. Whenever a live meeting begins, it will always start right here in the post section of my home room. An invitation to join the live home room will pop up in the post of the general link. Click Join Now. When the video image of the teacher appears, click Join Now. Students can click on the camera icon in the middle of the screen if they want to turn their camera off to be heard and maybe not seen. Clicking the speech bubble will open up a white screen on the right. You can chat with your teachers and other students who have joined the meeting. Clicking the icon of the two people in the middle of the screen will show in a white box on the right as well. This will show you who's joined the meeting. By hovering over the ellipsis next to the teacher's name and clicking pin this person will make the teacher's face the main screen for you to view. When the live meeting is over, you must remember, click the red phone to hang up. So let's just say I have a question for a teacher or maybe someone in the office. There are several ways to go about contacting people at Faith Baptist during our time of online learning. Well, first of all, if I have a question for my teacher, I could always put it in the post section. But let's just say it's a little more personal and I want it to be one-on-one. -on -one. Let's take a look at the thin slate gray section to the far left of our screen. This is often referred to as the Me section of Teams. Let's look at the second icon from the top, the chat icon. Click on that. Then look at the Compose New Message icon at the very top of your screen. Click there. Then in the To section, start typing Mrs. Williams' name, Jacqueline Williams. Click on her name. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a spot for you to start a new conversation. Let's say hi. Then click on the airplane to the far right of the bottom of your screen to send. 
There, it was just that simple to start a conversation with Mrs. Williams. But let's say maybe we wanted to have a video conference. Look down at the second to the last icon, Calls. Once I click on Calls, look at the bottom of the white section, Make a Call. Click there. Make a call and start typing her name, Jacqueline Williams. Click on her name. Then I have two options. I can either make a phone call directly from Teams or we could have a video conference. Perhaps this feature would be used if we had some one-on-one -on -one tutoring time or maybe a face-to-face -face conversation to show her a project and ask her a question. It's just that simple to communicate through the Teams platform. Although we are excited for the opportunity that God has given us to educate each of your children remotely, parents, please have a conversation with your children. Remind them of the expectations for behavior and kindness with their language, what they type and what they say. Let's be sure that we're being kind and using language that is appropriate. Remote education is new for most of us, but we will get through this one step at a time, together. We are here to support you and your family in prayer, with continued education, and with the technical support you may need to walk you through this new experience. Last week, we sent out some instructions. I hope that you'll take a look at those. There are several email addresses listed if you need help, whether it's signing on to your account or even needing someone to walk you through the team's process one-on-one. -on -one. We are excited for the opportunity to partner with you in the continued education of your child.